exposure as has you know the biological understanding of XY versus XX. Yeah. I think I think me and you have got enough grasp of yes. the scientific method yeah. to, to now move the conversation forward. So yeah, so so that's good. So what we're saying is effectively we agree on the fact that science is not an eternal truth, but that certain things are probabilistically more possible than others. Yes, and that some observations we have no grounds to dispute. Would you agree with that? There's certain observations within science. Yeah, I would agree with that. Right, and, and that... The, so the, for instance, like the XY and XX. Well, I, I mean, it, it's a bit more complicated than that because there's XXY and there's XYY. Right, right. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah these yeah, are yeah. additions yeah. rather than replacements for Mark. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah exactly. So, okay. the, so they work within a, a certain paradigm. Right. So now, here, here's, let, let me lay out my case. Yeah. Because I'm the prosecutor in this discussion. Now we are both prosecutors You're, and we're both defendants. Right, right, right. well, so, so let, we, me, let me, let me, let me, well, lay we, 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 we out talked out. about a fact that yeah, 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 yeah. we're going to bring both of the books. Yes, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. So in terms of the standard, so I'm going to lay out my case. In terms of the standard that the Quran lays out for itself, it says in Surah 482, you probably know it off the top of your head. Yes. What does he say? If it was other than God, they would have found in it many inconsistencies. Yeah, yeah many. exactly. Many. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just I'll just read it um, in the translation that we've got here as well. Yes. Sir. So just to make sure that there's no dispute for eighty-two. Do they do they not consider the Quran carefully? Yes. Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found therein many a contradiction. Now, many a contradiction can be internal contradictions or it can be external contradictions. Agreed? Yes. So, Muslims have marshaled, and I accuse the, the, the dawah, those who are doing dawah, I accuse them of lying deliberately because they claim and i'm going to demonstrate that it's false that the quran but when you say they let's be clear here the, not, the, the ones no, no, doing let, let's be let's be very specific because what are, people like zakia knight people okay, like people like adnan rashid people right. like so, so you're so I've, given, I've given you some examples Shabi no, but are you talking about zakia knight or are you talking because you have to understand something i, I think it's very important to realize that we don't all have the same view when it comes to this, I agree. So, I agree. so, so it's not. I don't think it's very clever to generalize. The well, I, I, I tried to be specific. I did say the dai, those doing dawah. Some, and I gave examples oh, of the right, kind yeah, of people that I'm talking. That's why about. I just had to interrupt to make sure that that kind of specificity was ensured. Okay, so, Go so ahead. we've we've clarified that. So now, in terms of the the, the argument, you like that? Eh? Yeah. In terms <laughs> of the argument, <laughs> argument with friend. Yeah. No, no, no. It's 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 to, totally fine. He in, said it's totally fine. In, in terms of in terms of the argument. We didn't, we didn't <laughs> In terms of the argument, yes, sir. Muslims make the argument that the Quran accurately describes embryology. That that's what they say. Yeah. Now I'm talking. I, I've qualified that. So when I say Muslims, I'm speaking about certain kinds of Muslims, like Adnan Rashid, like Zakia Naik, right, right. like Shabia Ali. Not right, right. every Muslim. I, I fully appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So it is fair, therefore, for me to test that argument. Of course. Right. So when I look at the description in the Quran, yeah. and I'm going to read it to you, I'm going to ask you to, to just, just qualify for me what you think the stages are that are being described. So if we go to Surah 23, 12. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So 12 to 14, if you want to recite that while I'm getting out the English. No, it's fine. You can just go ahead. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but, but, but just before I do recite it, if you want me to, there are, there are two space. There are. It's not just 23 which talks about stages. There's 22 yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I've got Surat that. I've got that. Yeah. So what? Do you want me to go through all the stages? No, no, no. I'm going to read it, and when you hear a stage, I want you to stop me, interrupt me, and say this is a stage. Is that fair? So, so that everyone can hear the case being made out. Right. Right. So, and indeed we created man out of an extract of clay. Thereafter we made him as a nufta. Nutfa. Nutfa, thank you. Uh, in a safe lodging. Then we made the nufta nutfa. In, nutfa into a cloth. Then into we a, made the, into, a, sorry? into a clot. Clots. Then we made the clot into a little lump of flesh. Yeah. Then we made out of that little lump of flesh bones. Then we clothed the bones with flesh. Yeah. And then we brought it forth as another creation. Yeah. So how many stages did you hear there? 
In this part, ولا قد خلقنا الإنسان من سلالة من تين. So number one, tin. What? So, what? Sorry. So the clay or mud. So clay. Yep. All right. Okay. And then you have. ثم جعلناه نطفة في قرار مكين. We made him into a نطفة in a safe lodging. So نطفة. نطفة. It's the same lodging. It's the safe lodging. ثم خلقنا النطفة علقة. خلقنا العلقة مضغة. فخلقنا مضغة عظاما فكسونا العظام لحما ثم أنشأناه خلقا آخر فتبارك الله أحسن الخالقين. So you hear three stages. No no so so no no you got you got you got so let's go with نطفة yeah we talk about embryology in particular right so if you have نطفة yeah which then you have مضغة which is مضغة is a lump yeah and in by the way on this no 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 just going through the stages but I have to no I'm doing it but you have to let me say what what it is yeah. In chapter 22, it says about mudra, mukhalaqatin wa ghayri mukhalaqa. So it's partly formed and partly unformed. Yeah. 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 And then, so after mudra, you have alaqa, which is a claw, and then after alaqa, you have aidam, which is bones. Yeah. And then you have after that flesh. Okay. So five. Now, again, just like the Muslim brother before him, without any prompting from me, no prompting from me at all. Muhammad said you have bones, then flesh. Yeah. So that's two Muslims yeah. independently, and Hijab's an experienced debater who said bones and then flesh. That's right. Now, guys, it is a simple fact of embryology, and you can all go and Google it right now. Bones do not. Bones. Now, notice the interruptions. Notice the interruptions. Guys, let him make his claim, please. Let him make his claim. There we go. Mansour. Hi Mansour. Hi Mansour. Mansour, do you not think that Hijab's big enough to stick up for himself? Yeah, we don't. I don't think Hijab needs your help. But if you want to come into the debate, stand there. No, no, can't. Just stand here. Can you continue? Why are you waffling? No, no, no. I'm going to correct it every now and then. Come on. Right. So, guys, I challenge you now to go away and research it yourself. No embryologist argues that bones become flesh. Not okay. anyone that is respectable. Okay. Except Mansour. Really? Except Mansour. <laughs> so, 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 sadly, this is why I have to raise my voice. I didn't want to, but I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to raise my voice because of Mansour. It's a shame because me and Hijab were having a nice conversation. Until Mansour turned up. <laughs> so, so I'm not, I'm not. All you're doing is delaying the argument. I'm still going to say my point, Mansour. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to show. I'm waiting for him to show. Made your point. I haven't finished my point. I haven't made my point. All right, guys, be quiet, please. Let him finish his point because we have nothing to hide here. We have nothing to hide here. Let him finish his point. He said there's no references. We're gonna, we're gonna just explore that. So the fact of the matter is, without any prompting from me, Hijab has said bones then flesh. Yes, yes. And it is a fact, ladies and gentlemen, a fact that you can check for yourselves that bones and flesh grow together. JC, focus. Okay, they grow together. They grow at the same time. Guys, guys, calm down. They grow at the same time from the mesoderm. Yes, yes. So when the Quran says that bones grow with flesh, it's wrong for two reasons. Yes, sir, go ahead. Firstly, yeah, yeah. there is no ossification at this point. It's cartilage. It's not bone. That's false. Man. Ossification comes that's, later. That's actually false. Comes later. And yeah, it yeah. isn't that the bones grow independently from the flesh. Right, by the way, that's... They grow together. Okay, uh, Why are you interrupting? Okay. They grow together. And this is why the Quran is wrong, because right. it stages it. And he admitted it. Fine. Bones, then flesh. Okay. Your response. Okay. He said there's no ossification. O ossification is when bone forms. And this is also referred to as osteogenesis, okay? He also said bones then flesh. Now, let's be very clear. The word bones in Arabic is aidam. Now, the, the word in the ayah was aidam. The word aidam in the Arabic language includes cartilage, by the way. How do we know that? If you look at the, the Arabic lexicons, and I can give you the names of them if you like. I'd like you to pull it up. Yeah, it's Lisan al Arab from Ibn Manzur. Yeah, no, can you pull it up? Can we see it? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, let's pull it up. Uh, so, for example, I'll tell you, I'll read it exactly as it says in the lexicon, right? Yeah. So, basically, this is what uh, Ibn Manzur says in his lexicon. 
Well, so, so, Al Fayrouz Abadi mentions. Al Fayrouz Abadi is another Arabic lexicon, okay? Al Ghudruf, and this is, he's, he died 817 Hijri. Al Ghudruf, Wal Ghudruf, Kullu Admin. Guys, please, I'm, I'm quoting it. I'm quoting it. I'm quoting it by the word. So there's no one here going to say, get me a reference. I'm quoting it. He says, Al Ghudruf, Al Ghudrufu Kullu Admin. رخصن يؤكل وهو مارن الأنفي ونغض الكتف ورؤوس الأصناع. Yeah, and this is in. I'll tell you exactly where it is. It is in Fayruz Abadi's Qamus al-Muhit, Volume One, Page 840. Any any issues? So yes, I have an issue. Okay, no, no. Let me finish. Yeah, I'll let you finish, but I have an issue. Now, now that we have established, have we not? You, with references, have we not? Yeah. That al ghudruf which are, is cartilage, is bone and cartilage can be used synonymously. He said that ossification doesn't happen. That's absolutely absurd. No, I didn't no, say no, that. No, he did say at this he point. Did. He, he did, did say that. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. No, no, no. No, he's making scientific mistakes. He said there's no reference as well. Okay. All right, so, let, let, excuse, let, me. Let, let me excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. He said, guy, calm down, because he's saying that there's no reference. I've got a book called The Fundamentals of Human Embryology. Be quiet, please. Uh, the Fundamentals of Human Embryology. Printed where, please? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll tell you. Page 148, this is a book that is used the, uh, by biologists in, in their first or second year. And this is also a book that is used by medical students where? and others. It's, it's a book called The Fundamentals of Human uh, Embryology. Okay. We'll, we'll look at it, where it might it be Oxford yeah. University yeah. Press. I'm okay. not going to give you like a full bibliography. Okay. Now you're so being a bit ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Fair now, fair page 148. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. All right, look, page 148. Listen to what it said. Soon after the cartilaginous models of the bones have been established, the myogenic cells, which have now become myoblasts, aggregate to form muscle masses on the ventral and dorsal aspects of the limbs. These muscle masses in the relevant compartments form the flexors and extensors of the joints. Rotator muscles are also formed so that flexors and protonators and pronotators are related and extenders are uh, uh, and supinators are related. Now this is very very clear to me and it's actually a reference. Can I, can I no, let me no uh, let wait, me just wait, finish. Okay. No 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 please. Yeah. When somebody who is a layman when it comes to science <laughs> and is a layman when it comes to philosophy and is a layman when it comes to Islamic theology and is a layman when it comes to the Arabic language yeah. has the audacity to come no, and stand... No, wait, excuse me. No, 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 calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. Has the audacity to come in front of... No, 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 let me finish. Has the audacity to come in front of me making two false claims, the first of which is that the Quran has said... Let me finish. Let me finish. He said it on the camera. He said it on the camera. On the camera. He, said on the camera. he said it on the camera. He said it on the camera. And this is at the age of technology. He said ossification doesn't happen at this stage. That's false. That is false. Osteogenesis. He didn't say that. Oh, say that. Well, we can rewind it. We can rewind it. Excuse me. Ossification does take place by the admission of the authorities. And that's what people are using in the universities all across this country. Number two. No, no. Number two. Well, excuse me. Let me finish. I gave you a reference. Let's you finish. So number two. Why weren't you saying it's that to Mansour? Number, number two. Come on, you're going on too long, me, Hijab. Let's talk, though. This is not fair argument. Now, this, is no, no, this is why we need to do it time. This is why we need to do it time. Okay, no, no, no. Let me finish this point. And then we'll do it. Then, no, then you can do it time. Okay. But let, I'm just making one more point okay, and then you can say yeah, what you like. Sure, sure. Number two, yeah. فَكَسَوْنَ al yeah. is the only interpretation in the Quran that the fa is chronological or the meaning is it chronological? No. There are two interpretations in the Islamic understanding. One of them is that it is chronological and the other one is that it's not chronological. And Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, he takes the view that all of it happens in the first 40 days. And the, he mentions that in his Sharh of the Hadith of in the Ahada kum liyakuna fi batni ummihi arba'ina yawman mudra uh, alaqa. Thumma, sorry, nutfa. Thumma yakuna alaqa tan ba'da thalika. Thumma yakuna mudra tan ba'da thalika. And then he says, and then because you know, excuse me, hold on. No, no, hold on, hold on. 
This hadith says, and, and wait, 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 let me finish. 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 You need to hear all the data. Otherwise, you won't know what. Listen. Let me finish. You're not finishing. Let me finish. You're not finishing. Give me what. You're not finishing. Let me finish. Carry on. Because you know he's gonna. There's another way of the hadith. Oh, here we go. Another one. Listen, please. Come down, please. He said, in the, there's another hadith, it's very important. This is very important. So he said that in the hadith of Muslim, and the, had, listen, the hadith of a Sahih Muslim, it's which means in that time, listen, it means in that time, it will be like that. So because it said the opinion of the Hanabila in the matter, the Hanbalis, it all happens in 40 days. Why is it there for that there's a difference of opinion among the Fuqaha? When Wait, can you just make when, another point? Please, oh, man, yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. Stop. Stop. Let me say it. 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 Let me say Let me finish. Let me say Let me finish. 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 I'm going to finish. No, you're not, though. You're just going to make another point. Let me finish. Look, that's why, that's why the Fuqaha have differed, the jurists have differed, as to when a woman can have an abortion. Some say 120 days. Some say 40 days. The ones who say it all happens within 40 days, based it on the hadith and the interpretation of the hadith of, the ha of Ibn Raja al Hanbali and other Hamad Abdullah. Therefore, now to making another point. In summary, in summary, in summary, in summary, number one, the interpretation of in the interpretation of chronology is not consensus. Number two, even if we say it is, it includes the cartil uh, cartilaginous uh, models, and that is what, according to this book, which is an authority that all of the doctors are using, is actually happening. Ossification and mesogenesis are happening at the same time, and that means to say that the, the cartilaginous models are moving in the way that the Quran says. You have no way to go. Okay, so now let me reply. Now let me reply. So, okay, we're, gonna, we're just going to change the battery. We're going to we're gonna, let him go, please. Now I'm going to give him this time. No one interrupt him. Yeah. <coughs> Tell that to Mansoor. <coughs> you told him to come. So finish them. Please, please, uh, everybody, make sure that you don't interrupt him because whatever he says is going to be refuted and then we're going to move on to the Bible where he's going to have nowhere to run. Okay, so, guys, I listened carefully to the book that he quoted. Okay. And this is why I, I, I didn't want him to go on making point after point after point after point so that we could address all the points. This is how you construct a fake miracle. You blind people with words. It's an, a, a rhetorical device called Sufism. You, it's just sophistry. You bring out lots and lots of things. People can't grasp all the points that you're making. And then because they can't process all the information, they just accept the summary. And this is a tactic that Hijab has just demonstrated perfectly. The, the, I, notice the interruption. Notice the interruption. So, ladies and gentlemen, I listened to the quote from the book that he quoted. And what I heard, what I heard was that bones and flesh grow together. But if you remembered when I asked Hijab to name the stages, he said, and you'll see the flashback on our, on our picture on Soko Films, he said, the bones came before flesh. He did, he did. That's what he said. Yes. So he said yes. the bones came before flesh and then he quoted a book that said exactly the opposite. <laughs> and he thought that I wouldn't notice. And he thought that I wouldn't notice. But I did notice because I have examined this sophistry before and I understand its rudimentary tactic. The idea is to blind you with lots of big sounding words. Let me just, let me just clarify. Let me, what, let me just clarify. In another part of the Quran, so we read 23, um, 23, 12 to 14. But in two, five, in Surah 2, uh, Ayah 259, okay. 
it also says exactly the same. It's towards the end of the verse. If yeah, you're no, no. There's two. There's two khara'is in that one. Yeah. ثُمَّ نُشِرُهَا عَظْمَةً and ثُمَّ نُشِرُهَا عَظْمَةً. Right. Okay. Let me let me give the English. But you won't get what uh, both khara'is. Let, let let me give the English, bro. Yeah. So that's why you need. I am still making my point, hijab. It's fine, bro. Hijab. I'm still making my point. Take your time, please. Yeah. Okay. So. In Surah 2, 259, it reads. Yeah, yeah, please. Because if I get to it. Do you want me to help you out with that? No, no, I can right, find so. it, thank you. Oh, it's just a case of. It's not about embryology, you know that. Let me. Let, it said, now notice it said it's not about embryology. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah? So let's actually look at whether it talks about embryology. Okay, yeah. yeah it yeah, says yeah, this. And thus we have made of you a sign for the people. Look at the bones. How we bring them together and clothe them with flesh. When this was clearly shown to him, he said, I know that Allah is able to do all things. No, don't interrupt. You insisted that I didn't interrupt. I'm going to say everything I've got to say. You've got to listen. So the fact of the matter is, in two places, the Quran says bones, then flesh. Hijab said bones, then flesh and then quoted a book that said flesh and bones grow together. Yeah, yeah. That's what he did. And he hoped you wouldn't notice. Now he also talked about ossification. He also talked about ossification. The reality is, unless Hijab wants to say that he is an embryologist, it is clear from every work of embryology that bones are not immediately ossified. Yeah. They begin as cartilage. Yeah. The Quran does not mention cartilage. He said, have you got a problem with that? When he quoted the lexicon. And I said, yes, I do. But he insisted that he finish all of his many, many points. Are you honestly telling me that Allah doesn't have a word for cartilage when he wants to talk about cartilage? And he doesn't have a word for bones when he wants to talk about bones? No, no, you're going to listen. He's Don't losing his patience Don't now. <laughs> he won't. Oh, and look at the interruption. He was interrupting you. He was interrupting you. So, tell me when you're finished. Yeah, I'm going to. But I'm going to finish all my points. Like you mentioned a lot. Yeah. Do I've do tried. No, no, no. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. I'm not interrupting. Stop interrupting. Just stop interrupting. Right. So. The reality is, and I just challenge you to check me now. Do bones, what, what is a bone? A bone is an ossified cartilage. There is a reason why we have distinct words for cartilage and bones. And what you're saying is, Allah is inaccurate in his description. Because he can't use a word for cartilage. He uses one that could mean cartilage and could mean bones or could mean the two things together. If he means the two things together, then it's an error because cartilage is not bone. If it could be cartilage or could be bone, then it's an error because it should be cartilage, not bone. So either way, the Quran is wrong. Now, he said, he said, hijab, are you impressed at my memory of how I've remembered all your arguments? Wow. He said, what did he say? how dare you, a layman in philosophy, a layman in Arabic, a layman in embryology, have the audacity yeah, yeah. to stand in front of me? Do you all remember him saying that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see, he's not the only one with a good memory. Let's just correct a fact. He came and stood in front of me, not the other way around. But secondly, secondly, he is a layman in embryology. He is a layman on this topic. But I'll tell you someone who isn't a layman in embryology. Here's, a, here's someone who isn't a layman in embryology. So, someone who isn't a layman in embryology is Dr. P. Said Myers, a human biologist from un the University of Minnesota. Okay. He describes the Quran's understanding of embryology as follows. Vague and fuzzy and basically stealing from Aristotle. Wow. <laughs> That's what I 
real embryologist says about the Quran. Now, why? This is the interesting point. Why does he say the Quran is stealing from Aristotle? Why? Now, personally, I think he's wrong. I think there were Arab doctors at the time who were educated in medicine. But if you listen to Aristotle's words, listen to this. This is quoting from, um, quoting Aristotle's work on the parts of animals. Aristotle lived 350 years before Christ which makes him a thousand years before Muhammad. I thought it was 337. And this, no, 350. And this is what he says, stop interrupting. <laughs> In the const, this is embryology according to Aristotle. Listen, around about the bones and attached to them by the fibrous bonds grow fleshy parts for the sake of which the bones exist. Does that sound familiar? Bones, then flesh. That was a common understanding at the time of Muhammad. There is nothing miraculous about what the Quran says, and the Quran gets it wrong. Thank you very much. Now it's my turn to respond, but I do think we should time it, by the way, because we don't know. Oh, now you want it timed. No, I do think so. I agree. Let's time it. What do you want? Five minutes each. Five minutes each. Can we get a timer, please? Five minutes each. And you've got to be willing to show your phone to both of us on request. Five minutes is done. Are you willing to show your phone to both of us on request? Okay. Now, before I put Ashley, let him get it. Yeah, he's going to touch you. So you said five minutes? Five minutes each. We've got this. Okay, go. Let's read it again, because I don't think this man has good comprehension skills. He said that, no, he doesn't have good comprehension. This is the problem. We're dealing with someone who can't understand. He said that it said that both of them are forming at the same time. No, it doesn't say that. It says, soon after, indigenous models of the bone have been established. So first what we have, cartilaginous models of the bones have been established, yeah? Then it says what? The myogenic cells, which have now become myoblasts, yes? Aggregate to form muscle masses. Now let me explain what it's saying here. It's saying that you have cartilage, or these cartilaginous models, and then you have the myoblasts which are myogenic cells, which then become myoblasts that are coming on top. Is that what I, it says, yeah? Everybody knows who has done even a little bit of reading in embryology, that myoblasts are the cells that are responsible for muscle growth. That is a fact of embryology. Go to any book of embryology that you like. It is responsible for flesh. So he's saying that it's saying at the same time. No, it's not. It's saying first the cartilaginous models have been established and then after that you have the myogenic cells which are responsible for flesh that are coating them exactly as the Quran states if you want to take the chronological reading. As I've said though, that's not the only interpretation of the Quran because there's fa' attaqibiyya, the fa' which comes as like summa, which is for chronology and fa' as, as, as fa' as sababiyya or a fa' that's not necessarily like that. Fa' kasawna al-aidama, lahma, that we have clothed the bone with uh, muscle. So that's point number one, completely and utterly refuted. He said it said, and this is false. It's, it's, Demonstrably false. He said it said it at the same time. Where is in what I read saying the same time? Can you read and understand? Do you understand that myogenic cells are responsible for flesh? Do you understand that ossification is responsible for bones? But he said ossification continues. Do you know when it continues until? It continues until adulthood, by the way. Correct. Yeah, so it's, what's that got to do with our discussion? He said that no, he could have used the word Rudruf or the word for, specifically for cartilage. That's not necessarily a good description. You know why? Because had there been any bone that started, then that would eliminate. So all the word Adam includes cartilage and bone, whereas the word Rudruf is cart cartilage only and not bone. So it would explain bone, which would be less specific. Point number three, he mentioned, he mentioned now, he mentioned Aristotle. Aristotle said in his treatises that a woman, she has menstruation blood contributes to 
the embryological process. I want you to find me one verse of the Quran or one hadith of the Prophet where that is in fact copied. If he copied from Aristotle, why is he not copying that? Aristotle also said that the baby is formed in its entirety and then it just gets bigger and bigger. That's completely against the Quran and the Sunnah. How comes Aristotle did not mention Nutfat and Amshaj, where that whereby both of the uh, mixed uh, fluids are there? Where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he mentioned that. The Prophet Muhammad mentions Laysa al min al -ma kulli, that the boy or the, the, the child is not from the entire, uh, the, the entire fluid. Meaning now, what is the Quranic picture? Chapter number 76, verse number 2. Nutf inna khalaqan al insana min nutfatin amshaj in nabatalihi fa ja'alnahu samiyan basira. That we have made the human being from a, a combined mixture of fluids and test him and we have made him hearing and seeing. So wait a minute, it's saying it's mixed. And wait a minute, the Prophet said it's a part of that mixed fluid, not all of it, which is we know it's one cell of the man and one cell of the woman. There's nothing like that in the Bible at all, my friend. You have no chance. There's nothing like that in Aristotle's work at all, my friend. There is nothing like that in Galen's work at all, my friend. And there's nothing like that in the Talmud at all, my friend. How did he know this? Where did he get this from? Did he get it from the Bible what, where it says that human being is made like curdled cheese? Where it says in, in Job chapter 9 verse number 6 that the, uh, the earth is flat and has pillars yeah. and no one, no one in the, no one in the patristic, listen, no one in the patristic period for 300 years, not one I claim now has ever said that the earth is round based on the biblical narrative. Everyone was a flat earthist. John of Chrysostomus, uh, when he done his exodus of people uh, and others, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and if you look at origin of Alexandria, he was a spiritualist and others. All of this shows that the Bible has no way of connecting with today's science and the Quran does. Can all for show him out. Give him five minutes. Right. Okay. Ready? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's stop there again. The hijab went on to say. Firstly, we need to establish something that even in ancient times, the Greeks knew that the world was round. This is not something new. It is an enlightenment myth that people in the past thought that the world was flat. And I won't take a lecture from Muhammad Hijab about the shape of the earth when the Quran says that the earth is stretched out like a carpet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, have you ever seen a round carpet? Or are carpets flat when they are stretched out? Flat. So Muhammad has just chucked his Quran under the bus. No, he went on to talk about the fact that the Quran mentions that the child is created from the fluid of the woman and the fluid of the man. This is an error. It is not a fluid. It is an egg. It is a cell. It isn't a fluid. So he has just exposed the Quran for another error because as the Quran says and we'll quote it and we made the nufta nufta thank you into a clot sorry sorry here we go thereafter we made him the offspring as a nutfa drops of male and female sexual discharge now ladies and gentlemen if I have to tell you that an egg is not a fluid, it is an egg, a cell, then you don't know what a fluid is, and it would appear neither does your God. But firstly, it says a drop of male fluid. A drop of male fluid, ladies and gentlemen, contains thousands of sperms. So the Quran is also wrong there, because a drop of sperm what we would consider a drop of sperm has thousands of the cells of sperms within it, if not tens of thousands. 
but it's only one sperm that creates the, the human embryo. Furthermore, furthermore, this idea of females contributing to females contributing to the genesis of another human being is not unique to the Quran. There were other Greek philosophers who taught embryology who believed exactly the same. Now he said, what about, what about the idea of the woman's blood contributing to the birth of a human embryo? He objected to the idea of the menstruation blood, and obviously he's right to do so. But the Quran says this, then we made the nutba into a clot of coagulated blood. A clot of coagulated blood is not what an embryo is ever. A clot of a co coagulated blood is dead blood. It is stopping uh, based upon a cut. It is stopping rupture, it is stopping bleeding. So the Quran is wrong there. So now we've got, in addition to the embryology error, we also have the error that the Quran says the world is flat, like a carpet stretched out. Thank you. And that is also an error. Remember, he condemned the church fathers for being flat earthers, but the Quran is a flat earther. It describes the world as being stretched out like a carpet. No. He goes on to talk about the fact that the ossification, he quoted his book again, and he's trying to mislead you because that full quote, do you honestly believe that bones grow without any skin or flesh? Where's the photo evidence? There's no such thing. Flesh and bone grow together. Notice the interruption. I'm not gonna give you it grows at the same time. That is the conclusion of embryologists. And we've got two facts now that the Quran gets wrong. A flat earth and embryology. All right, uh, I wanna break a news to everybody. I wanna break news to everybody. You know P PZ Myers, the one he quoted as the embryology authority, who said that the earth was inaccurate. Do you remember that one? That sorry, that the Quran is inaccurate. You remember the one he quoted? He retracted that statement one week ago, and it's on the public record that he retracted that statement one week ago. And he said, in fact, I retract this point. That P. Z. Myers, the person here, person point number one. Point number two is this. He's the, the main point he was saying is the book doesn't say that the cartilaginous models come before the myogenic cells form around them. I've quoted it again, and there is a chronological, there is a chronological, sequential, step by step, which completely negates what you're saying. Point number three, there is an interpretation which says both are happening at the same time. So all of these things, you have nothing for them. He then talked about the flat earth. Here's what I say, and it is a challenge to the Christian world, not just you, because you are it's significant. Oh. You are challenged the Christian oh, world. Getting oh, he's getting upset. Be quiet, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. There is not one church father in the first 300 years of Christianity that ever looked at even one verse in the Bible and concluded that the earth is round. Whereas, there are scholars in the first 300 years of Islam who looked at the Quran itself and deduced from that that the earth is round. Ibn Munada being one of them who Ibn Taymiyyah mentions in Kitab al Arsh, and that is something that is there. Ibn Hazm being another one who quotes chapter 39, verse 5. Chapter 39, verse 5. And listen, 
This is taqweer, comes from the Arabic word kura, which means ball. Be quiet, my friend. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth, my man. Calm now, down, having said, Calm this, down. having said this, now. You're getting excited, mate. Calm this, down. Having, no, no, it's not finished. Be quiet. Ali, be quiet. Here's what I would say. Look, listen to this. Listen to it. Be quiet. Listen. Now, what have the Jews said about the Bible? They believed in something called metal plate theory. Look what he said. <clears throat> That in the Midrashim, which is the exegesis of the Bible, for how many hundreds of years, no Jew has looked at the Old Testament and concluded around earth. They believed in the thickness of the firmament equal to that of the earth. And he talks about metal plates. And you can, you can even see here that, you can even see here that some of them, the origin of Alexandria, who looked at the Bible, the first page of the Bible, <laughs> the, first, yeah, the first page of stop laughing. The first page of the Bible. The first page of the Bible which talks about the creation of the heaven and the earth. When the second day what was created, the luminaries were created before the sun was meant to be Origin created. Origin said what Origin man of intelligence said. Be quiet. What man of intelligence will believe this? This is your church fathers condemning the literal reading. He was forced yeah. to spiritualize the meaning of the Bible because it was contradictory to the reality. Yeah. And he said also, what man of intelligence would, when, when in the Bible, it said that the devil took Jesus to the high mountain. He could see all the nations of the earth. That's the New Testament. Yeah. And he said, what, how, could he, how could he see it? Origin is saying this in On Principles, in the, in the appendix section. Yes, yes. He said, what man can see with his own fleshly eyes all the nations of the earth? Now tell me now, where is your, where is your evidence? I've asked you once, I'll ask you again. Get me one church father. I've given you two references myself just now. Get me just one reference of anybody looking at any verse of the Bible and concluding that the earth is round from the book itself. Not, not because of Aristotelian logic, which entered into the exegetical or people like Augustine when he, when he started mentioning the, the round rotundity of the earth. That's a different situation, yes. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't look at the Bible and say it was round because of the earth. He, and if you look at John Walton, who is a Christian scholar, he mentions the circle of the earth, which is mentioned in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. And he said, but that by consensus, this means like a disc. So don't ever come to me with this. I have already told you, Ibn Hazm, Ibn Munada, the Salaf, the people and the Salaf of the first 500 years, saying the earth is round because of the Quran. Not one church father says the earth is round because of the Bible. Respond or be condemned. <laughs> okay, that was brilliant oratory. I think he deserves a round of applause. That was absolutely brilliant. So, are we all done? By the way, by the way, Allah is not a mouse. He's not a mouse. He's not a mouse. Doesn't matter how many times you say he's a mouse, he's not a mouse. Akbar means mouse. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was a brilliant piece of oratory, yeah, but unfortunately that. complete flannel. <laughs> and the reason why it was complete flannel, ladies and gentlemen, why? is because the church fathers yeah. were not trying to argue that you should become Christian because of science. Yeah. This is a modernist style of argument. Notice the interruption. This is a modernist style of, in, of, of argumentation. The early church fathers yeah. were trying to convince people to become Christian by using philosophy yes. because that was the lingua franca of education at their time and they were good at it. The reality is in the book of Job, if you want to mine some verse to, to quote the idea of the earth being round, in the book of Job it says and blessed is he who sits upon the circle of the earth. It's Isaiah, by the way. No, it's in Job. It's Isaiah, it's by the way. In Job, stop interrupting. <laughs> no, furthermore, oh, furthermore, oh, he said, oh, we've got all these Muslim scholars who believe that the world is round because of the Quran. Why did they even bother? <laughs> Pythagoras knew the world was round before Jesus. The Greeks knew the world was round 
before Jesus. It wasn't a new thing. And they didn't need a revelation to do it either. But actually, let's listen to what the Quran says about the shape of the earth. It says, have we not made, everyone say made, made. the earth as a bed. <laughs> a bed is a what bed. the Quran says. When was the last time you slept on a circle bed? You sleep on a flat bed, hijab, not a circle bed. So yes. Muslim scholars believe that the world was round, but so did the Greeks a thousand years before them. A thousand years before them. And the Quran says that the world is made like a bed. So, stop interrupting. So, now coming back to this question about ossification and bones. So, ossification and bones. Basically, Mohammed Hijab has admitted a few things. Number one, he has admitted that some Muslims do, and he seems to be one of them, interpret the verses of the Quran as sequential. So I'm not misrepresenting Islamic beliefs. There are Muslims that argue it. Two, he has admitted that there are alternative words for both cartilage and bones and I need to remind you that the reason why we call cartilage cartilage and not bone is because they are not the same thing they are ossification that went really quick for five minutes anyway fair enough so in terms of in terms of ossification Allah could have used the right term the reality is Biologists will tell you that bones and flesh come from the same material, the mesoderm. Bones and flesh come at the same time from mesoderm. And he didn't like Dr. P. Z. Myers. He said that he retracted it. I'd like to see the reference. I want to see the proof because it's easy to say he retracts it. I want to see the proof. But it's not just Dr. P. Z. Myers that says this. It's also Dr. Joseph Needham, who dismisses Quranic descriptions of embryology as a cheap ripoff of classical text. And Dr. Joseph Needham is also an embryologist. And he studied the history of embryology. So we have nothing unusual in the Quran, nothing miraculous in the Quran. The Greeks knew it beforehand. And also, the Quran gets it wrong. And he's talking about patristic fathers. Okay. All right, guys, let me read out. He said it's Job. The circle of the earth is in, in the book of Isaiah. As I corrected him and told him he doesn't want to believe me, but it's there. And look at this. Look at what John Walton, he says this by word. One of the supported texts on this, sorry. He says, uh, 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 he's, so basically here. One, uh, uh, one of the most common examples given by those who suggest that there is a latent scientific consideration is Isaiah 40, 22, which posits a spherical earth. This cannot be sustained because its terminology indicates a disc, not a sphere. A disc, not a sphere. Walton, 2009, page 174. And the word used here is hug. Hug in the, ear in the Hebrew language does not mean a sphere. Hug in the Hebrew language by the consensus of those who speak, by the consensus of the Midrashim, by the consensus of Allah and all those individuals, means a, a, a disc, not a sphere. So tell me now, tell me now. I want to know. The people want to know. He wants to know. Even this guy wants to know. One verse in the Bible which can particularly be interpreted in a way to in any way direct, indirect, indicate that the rotundity of the earth rather than the flat disc nature of the earth was the consensus, Midrashim, the consensus 
of all of those who have ever looked at the Bible and, and had a cosmology because of it. That's the first point. The second point is this. He keeps mentioning the mesoderm. I don't think he understands what the mesoderm is. The mesoderm is the flesh that comes over the the cartilaginous models. I've already explained this. You can go back to the references. If you don't like it, there's another interpretation which implies simultaneity, that the bone happening at the same time. No problem. There are two interpretations. Number three, I'm not making the argument that all of this is miraculous. I've not said that. I believe that the Quran speaks in a way that everybody can understand. From the physicist to the farmer, from the 7th century dweller to the 21st century man. Does he not know what he created? And he is the all subtle, all aware. He is the all subtle and all aware. Yes. So Allah speaks in a way that the Bible does not speak in. That people from the very early times, the Christian scholars themselves, were making a mockery of the literal reading of the Bible. Look at Origin of Alexandria again. Listen, it doesn't matter. He says this. How, how, no, no, he talks about this. How? He says, listen, he says, how could it possibly have happened literally? Either that the devil should have been led Jesus up to a high mountain or that his fleshly eyes, he should have shown all the kingdoms. He's saying, how could he see all the kingdoms when all the nations were not at the foot of the mountain? That implies flat earth. That implies, I'm telling you now, defend your Bible. Stop trying to think you have something on the Quran. Where in the Bible, give me one person that ever existed that said that the earth was round because of the words of the Bible. You said, uh, you said Job and mentions hug. He mentioned the sphere, he mentions the disc of the earth. John Walton, who is a scholar of Christianity says, this cannot be sustained because the word means it is a sphere, it is a disc and not a sphere. This close, my friend, to queer comes from the word kula, which means a ball and not something which is flat. It's over, my friend. How dare you come and talk to me about science? When in Genesis chapter five, if you add up all the days together, as have the young age creationists, you will come to the conclusion that the universe is 6,000 years old. 6,000 years old, and wait a minute, how do you know that Genesis chapter 5 has all these lineages from Adam to his son, from his son to his son, 130 years, 150 years, add it all up like Noel has done, and you have 6,000 years. You have the audacity to talk about some, some minor thing when it comes to embryology. When your Bible bashing friends in America have museums and institutions, hundreds of millions of pounds are being spent on the idea that the universe is 6,000 years old. How dare you tell us that the universe is 6,000 years old and that all these fossils are a conspiracy and come to me and us as the Muslim community I talk about science. How do you defend yourself against the fact that you have all these fossils, all these facts, and you have your Bible bashing mental man syndrome individuals that are believing the universe is 6,000 years old? The flat earthers were probably Bible believing flat earthers. This is the reality of the situation. Don't ever come here again and talk about science or anything else because it's over. And for more information, go to K by H. Dot co dot UK and go to my time. article time. on the proofs of the So world. allow me to reply. La ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Right now you're wasting time. Yeah. Is it fine? Okay. You don't mind wasting time. Five minutes. Ready? Oh, yeah. Are you busy? Split. I don't mind. Just five minutes. What's this? Just five minutes. I'll leave that. I'll be foul. Okay. So where where is this? Right. So, in terms of church fathers who believed that the earth was round, he wanted me to show him one. No, 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 I didn't. Stop interrupting. Stop interrupting. Stop interrupting. Stop interrupting. Stop interrupting. So, he wanted me to show him one. Erastothenethes of Alexandria, 276 to 194, calculated that the circumference of the Earth within 50 miles of its present estimate. Listen, listen, listen! No, ladies and gentlemen, in the book, in the book of Job, in the book of Job, one of the oldest books in the Bible, historians credit the Greeks with being the first to suggest a spherical Earth 
in the 6th century BC by Pythagoras, who suggested it. However, it was known before him. The round shape of our planet is something that is, was common knowledge all the way from the time of Jesus' time to the present. That is why Christopher Columbus went to the Americas because they believed that the world was round. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear about something. We Christians have never made a claim that the Bible is a scientific textbook free from error. That is not a Christian claim. That is not what the Bible claims. So he's judging something by a false standard. He's timing me, he's timing me. Oh, now he is. So, ladies and gentlemen, time please. So, yeah, so, in terms of, in terms of our time, okay, thank you, thank you. In terms of our time, ladies and gentlemen, Christians don't teach or believe that the Bible is perfect. That is a Quranic claim about the Quran. So you have to judge the Quran by what the Quran says and the Bible by what the Bible says. So the Bible says it is here to teach you about who God is and how to live. It doesn't claim to be perfect like the Quran. So when the Quran, stop interrupting. Stop interrupting. But when the Quran says what? So when the Quran, bear with me, stop interrupting. So stop interrupting. So when the Quran, so when the Quran describes the earth like a bed, put your hand up if you think a bed is a round ball. Go on, put your hand up. Oh, nobody, not one of them, not even hijab. But the Quran describes the earth like a bed. So I'm right to say that the Quran is in error. And if the Quran is in error, according to the Quran, not me, it's not from God. I need to defend the Bible in biblical terms, not in Quranic terms. Two minutes left. In Quranic terms. No, you took time away last time. In terms of in terms of the Quran, it states facts that are wrong. And I can say according to the Quran that it is false. According to the Bible, we do not make the claims about our Bible that Muslims make about their Quran. So him coming here and saying, don't come here and say this and say that, trying to act like the macho man, as if somehow this is impressive, as if somehow this is impressive, does not escape the errors in the Quran. How much time do I have? Now I have one minute 20. So I want to show you, one minute twenty. You took time away last time. You took time away last time. Give him another minute, please. Yeah. Give him another minute. He spent his time doing research. Give him another minute, please. Thank you. So in Surah 43.10, as if you were in any doubt about what the Quran said previously, Surah 43.10, it says this, who made you, who made for you the earth like a bed and has made for you roads therein in order that you may find your way. Like a bed. Who believes the earth is flat? Put your hand up. The Muslims don't, but the Quran does. No, ladies and gentlemen, he quoted Oregon. Oregon is not a church father. He lied to you. Oregon is not a church father. He's called an ecclesiastical writer. It's a step down from a church father. So he lied to you when he quoted Oregon. And we Christians don't follow the church fathers in their comments on science. Are you, are you, are you happy with that time? 
Yes. <laughs> Is everyone happy with the time? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, are you the time. Yeah. Let me tell you something. This We're verse that he keeps time. bringing up. This. This thing about bed. He keeps saying bed, bed, bed. Sorry, the word bed. The word sorry, mihada means cradle. So, for example, when Mary, Mary salam, Maryam, when she was, uh, when she was talking about Jesus, how uh, he, she mentioned that term, that the met when he was in the met disobia, which means what cradle. Now, really, when a woman cradles a baby, she cradles it like that, like in a shaped way, like that. Yeah. That's point number one. Point number two, the shape was not what is intended here. That what was intended in al najal al-Adl was the comfort. Was the, and how do we know that? In, Allah says in chapter number 67 of the Quran, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعْلَ لَكُمْ ذَلُولًا فَامْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ That he is the one who had made your, the earth subservient for you. So walk around its manakib, literally meaning shoulders. What are you going to say that it means? It, it means like the earth is like boxes now. No, it means that the, 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 the mountains are referred to in that sense. Go in these areas. But you don't understand imagery. The point of the matter is this. Before the scientific revolution, there were interpretations of the Quran that indicated the rotundity of the earth. That is nowhere to be afforded to us in the Bible. I didn't say any church father. I actually mentioned to him in his uh, in, in his exegesis against the Manichaeans, Augustine, he mentions the shape of the earth is round. You, you don't need Google for that. I can tell you myself, but he doesn't get... You mentioned the church for I know. Can you let him speak? Let, but I'm not saying... No, my, my argument, I think you've misunderstood it, was not who... No church father believes that the earth is round. I'm saying... No, I said that they used the Bible to indicate that that's what the Bible was saying. John Walton, he mentions in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, the word hug means a disc. It cannot be used, it's the closest thing we have, but it cannot be used to indicate the rotundity of the earth. He says, we don't have to have, we don't have to have, oh, he doesn't believe in biblical inerrancy. By the way, he might come from a more Catholic background, I don't know, but definitely a large portion of the Christian community, probably all of those in this part, believe in biblical inerrancy, which is the idea that the Bible is flawless. He is heretic in his belief according to those <laughs> no he is according to evangelicals who believe in biblical inerrancy he would be seen as a heretic he knows that now moreover here's the here's the point when you first open the bible and i say it again when you first open the contradiction let me show you how that you find in a genesis chapter one the luminaries were created on the fourth day Sorry, the sun was created on the fourth day, but the day and night that were created before that. And what, on commenting on this, origin of Alexandria, who he doesn't like because he's telling the truth. No, I like him. All right, he says this. He says, now what man of intelligence, what man of intelligence will believe that the first, the second, and the third day, and evening and morning existed without the sun, the moon, and the stars? And the first day, if we may say, call it that, without even a heaven. I do not think anyone will doubt that these statements are made by scripture in a figurative manner in order that they may, through them, be mystical truths may be indicated. Yeah. He is saying, therefore, that he has to spiritualize and allegorize the verses of the Bible in order to keep away from the biblical internal contradiction. It's not just an external one, but an internal one. How do we know that? Because vegetation is mentioned as, as happening on the fourth day in Genesis chapter 1 but when you look at Genesis chapter number 2 verse number 6 it said that no plant sprung up yet so much so that even scholars are saying this is a contradiction how could you have the vegetation on the fourth day in Genesis 1 and then in, 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 in Genesis 2 6 it says no plant has sprung up yet so were the plants there or were the plants not there that's the question what day and night there how can you have day and night without the sun you're talking nonsense. How dare you come with this to us? How dare you are all clowns. You're coming to us and talking about science. You've got your 6,000 year old universe, which he didn't even mention. He didn't even refute it. He can't defend himself. He can't defend himself. He had one bullet in the gun. It, it went astray. Now he's, he can't defend himself. He's on. He's beneath me. I'm in the mount. I'm slapping. I'm punching. He knows what I'm talking about. He's an MMA fighter. One day, maybe he can challenge me, and so on and so forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, no problem. Wasting your time. And so on and so forth, and that's it. I say this to you today. 
and I say to you with all my vigor and all the confidence, he has no answers to the rotundity problem, to the 6,000 year problem, to the internal contradiction problem, and I have all the answers to them. So, it's always true that if you give a man like Hijab enough rope, he'll hang himself. And that is exactly what he just did. Exactly yeah, what he just next? did. This point next? He admitted but in that Augustine, no a church sign? father, believed that the earth was round. He just spent <laughs> ages <laughs> arguing that no church believed that the earth was round from well, the Bible, but then admits that Augustine did. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the reality is, and he quote, notice the interruption again. Notice the interruption. Pause my time. Pause this time, please. Pause this time. Yeah. Right. Are you Pause done? This time. Okay. You done? No. Okay. They ready? From the Bible. Are you ready? Wait, wait, wait. He asked you from the Bible. Are you done? You can't. Just okay. From the Bible. He's right. gonna. He's done. He's deaf. He's when you done? Listen to you. Okay. Ready? He's ignorant. So Augustine himself and Oregon whom he quotes, both interpret Genesis allegorically. That is the orthodox historical use of Genesis. It's only fundamentalists in the 20th century that shouted and screamed about a literal interpretation of Genesis. This is not how the Christian fathers use Genesis. So he just shot his entire argument dead because he evidenced the fact that the historical use of Genesis is allegorical and non-literal, not literal. So he's attacking the Bible based upon a literal reading when he admits that the church fathers don't do that. And then he says, show me the church fathers that do X, Y, and Z. But glory to God, the Holy Spirit that inspired Genesis was smarter than Oregon and apparently smarter than Hijab. Because the reality is, Hijab, and here's a very brief summary of physics, that a sun is a collapsing gas cloud. Before it meets the point of nuclear fission, of driving atoms together, elements together, to form bigger elements, it gives off light, it gives off radiation. If you were stood there before the sun became a sun and entered into nuclear fission, you would be able to detect its light and you would be able to detect its heat. So actually, Given this fact, it is true that there would have been light in the infrared spectrum before there was light from a sun that would have come later. What infrared the spectrum. Please, please, please. The infrared spectrum. Please. Are you honestly telling me, are you so ignorant of physics that you think a sun reaches nuclear fission before it gives off heat? Go back and pick up your GCSE study books. You're laughing at your own ignorance. No, that infrared radiation, ladies and gentlemen, would have been the very source of food. I do not believe that Genesis needs to be taken literally. I don't believe that. The church fathers don't believe that. So, he's attacking the Bible based upon a 20th century belief that comes from America, not the historical belief of the church. He's undone his own arguments, but he believes that the Quran is perfect. The Quran describes the earth as a bed. Do you believe the earth is a bed? But more than this, here's another error in the Quran. Another one. Time, 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 Until time. when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a spring of black, muddy water. Put your hand up if you believe that the sun sets in a puddle of mud. Who believes that?
Who fired the hijab? Nobody. <laughs> Not even hijab. <laughs> so, on one hand, we don't need to square the Bible with science in Christianity. But on the other hand, the Quran is in error even though it claims not to be. So, you can stand there and do your macho routine and try to be the big man, but intellectually, Hijab, you're beaten in your criticism of my faith and the defense of your own. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well done, well done. listen to this, listen to this. Sorry, it's added, it's added 53 minutes, so what I'm gonna do is like, I'm just gonna take yeah. off that 53 minutes of the Sorry? So it's added three just minutes, so I'm just gonna take 53 minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. It will count, it's still yeah. counts for All right, no problem, <clears throat> 40 now. He says that, he says that the, he's trying to portray that the typical interpretation of the biblical corpus from an ecclesiastic and patristic perspective, the church fathers was an allegorized understanding. And there is no further thing away from the truth as understood by R.C. Hansen, a, a known scholar who, who, who wrote books and tracts attacking origin of Alexandria on his allegorization and spiritualizing of the text in, when actually there was no precedent before that for him and the Alexandrian school, people like Thilo, who was a Jew, who also had the same kind of understanding. Moreover now, he mentioned Augustine. I said Augustine, and very important, Augustine came to the conclusion of the rotundity of the earth, not because of the Bible, but despite it. He was an Aristotelian and he came to that conclusion. My, my uh, challenge to him was to find someone who uses the Bible and exegetes it to have a spherical or rotundity of the earth perspective. Number two. Number three, he says that he tries to imply that Origen, sorry, that Augustine, he had the approach of Origen of Alexandria, which was an anomalous and aberrational approach in the exegetical method of the ecumenical church fathers, when actually the truth of the matter is he actually didn't even know that, uh, that Augustine, who is a 5th century scholar, actually named his exegesis on a literal interpretation of the Bible. He had two. He had one called against the Manichaeans and he had one called on a literal interpretation of the Bible. So this guy doesn't even know his own books. I know more than him on his own books. Now listen to this. This is going to be a good night argument. I promise you today, he will go to sleep. <laughs> you will go to sleep. I am getting bored. Okay, you will go you to sleep. Are you are going to go to sleep. Me. Just like I'm sure he has been many times in the ring. I'm going to say this to you once and I'm going to say it to you very clearly. One time, Celsus, who was an apologist, a Greek uh, uh, apologist, he came to Origin of Alexandria and he asked Origin of Alexandria, what do you say? How can you have a God that died on the cross? Yeah. Do you know how he responded? Oh. Do you know how you responded? He's still a lobby. He's breaking off the top. Do you know how you responded? He re He's definitely going to sleep. Do you know how he responded? And you can see all these references, by the way. Go kbyh.co.uk and download my PDF on the truth of Islam. You'll find all the references there. He basically allegorized it. He said, "All we cannot say that all of the events relating to the cruci uh, to the crucifixion are true." And excuse me, stop. can you stop? Can you stop talking? Yeah, I know, but I can't. I can't. You're not even listening to what I'm saying. You're not even engaging with this point. So, all right, listen. Look at me. Look at me. Origin of Alexandria, when he was asked by Celsus, and this is referenced in my article on kbyh.co.uk, he was asked, "What do you say of the crucifixion?" What do you say of, of Jesus dying on the yeah, cross? He said it should not be seen as literal. In other words, the same spiritualizing, allegorical understanding that he employed with Genesis, he employed with the crucifixion. So if you want to have your cake, you can't eat it. Because the reality of the situation, if you start saying that Genesis is an allegory, then you might as well say the whole crucifixion was an allegory if you want to use the hermeneutical principles of origin of Alexandria. It's over. You want to allegorize Genesis? Go ahead and allegorize the crucifixion. Just as origin allegorized it, just as he metaphorized it, why do you want why do you have it? What's your principle? What's your principle for allegorization? What is your hermeneutical principle? How can you allegorize one and not the other? Why? On what basis? Who gave you the authority to allegorize Genesis and not allegorize what? 
the crucifixion. Origin of Alexandria, when probed by Celsus, he allegorized the crucifixion, meaning your central tenets, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension, and so on and so forth. All of that can be allegorized. And if it is allegorized, what remains of Christianity? It's all fallen apart. It's all gone. It becomes a myth, just like Hinduism. It becomes like the Greek uh, mythology. It becomes like anything else. So there you have it. If you want to say it's allegorized, then you must allegorize. You must allegorize uh, the crucifixion because there is no authority that you may be granted. There is no authority that you, hermeneutical authority. Yes, that you may have. Yes, yes. There's no hermeneutical authority that you have to allegorize one and not the other. And that's why it's done. And that's why you're finished. And that is why you can never stand in front of me. And you can, you can have the rest of the time. I'm giving you rest of the time. I'm giving you quite, because I gave him an extra 55 minutes, 55 seconds, sorry. Right, so, right. I've got an extra, yeah, shall we do this last one? Whoa, whoa, Okay, so is this, is, am I speaking last? Yeah, yeah. Is, is this the last, am I speaking last? No, you go now. No, no, no. no. Right. You started. You're the one no, that started, start. so he no, no, you started because no, 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 you laid out the parameters of science. So you I got that. No, you started. Bring, no, you started. You, you went. You talked. You bring man, in the hijab, question about hijab, the Quran, hijab, about hijab. The, You religion. laid out the parameters of science first. Remember? About the you laid out the parameters. You talked about the paradigm. So you started. So I have to finish. So I have to finish. So so I have to finish. We started from that. This is the last talk. Right. Okay. Last round. Right. Last round. I'm speaking last. This is the last talk. And we're going to show you. Yeah. No. 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 Right, are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Is your last round? And then no, no, no. Like, this is the last talk. Done. After me. Done. Finished. Because we started. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully to the double standards the hijab is asking you to work to. He is saying to you that you have to believe in a literal interpretation of Genesis. Why? Because of his quote of origin. Now, he didn't actually quote origin, he just threw his name into some statements. The fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, origin is not a church father. So he's quoting the wrong source. Origin is called yeah. an ecclesiastical yeah. writer. Yeah. Now notice that Hijab yeah. wanted me to you, you pay attention, oh, but he's not doing it now. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we Christians yeah. are not committed to a literal interpretation of the Bible in toto. We don't do that. Our church fathers didn't do it. He's admitted as much. He said as much. He said that Augustine believed in a round earth. He said that. So we Christians don't need to defend every statement of the Bible as if it was literally true. Now he said that the description the origin used was literal, that there was allegorical about the crucifixion. I know Origen's writings. I read Origen's writings. And he says that there are layers of interpretation to the scripture that include the literal and go beyond the literal. And he was talking about the metaphorical symbolism that we can pull from the crucifixion. He was not denying the historical event of the crucifixion, hijab tried to mislead you. No, the Quran has made a number of factually false statements, and it doesn't matter with what bombacity hijab prances around in this little theater of ours flexing his muscles, kissing his muscles, and trying to talk about beating people up intellectually. The reality is that his Quran has finished his religion because his religion, his Quran, says that if it was from any other than Allah, 
I would find errors therein. I would find contradictions. The Quran says bones became flesh. This contradicts embryology. The Quran says that the earth is flat. This contradicts our study of the world, which is clearly spherical. The Quran states that the sun sets in a puddle of mud. A puddle of mud. And it clearly doesn't set anywhere on earth. I have found errors in the Quran. And the only way that he gets around them is what? Is by saying, oh well, Muslim scholars knew better than their Quran. I agree. But so did the Greeks before Jesus know better than the Quran. He said, well, your church fathers didn't believe in the earth as being round from the Bible. But then he showed that those church fathers do believe in the circle of the earth. Do you honestly believe that they would uphold the idea of the circle of the earth in one hand and then as Christians say that it contradicts the Bible? Of course they wouldn't. And why do they not see a contradiction? Because as the church fathers demonstrate consistently, the reading of the Bible is not meant to be a scientific text. It does not have to be read that way, nor does it have to be defended that way. And so his criticism of the Bible is misplaced because it is not what we Christians believe. But he believes that every utterance...